Hello, welcome to Mr. T's Geometry Videos. In this first video, we're going to study parallelograms. In a parallelogram, uh, there are many theorems associated with it. Uh, I'm not going to take the time to prove these theorems in detail, but I will talk to you a little bit about how uh, to prove um, these theorems on your own, or you can take the time to go and find uh, the proofs to each of these theorems in my uh, YouTube channel or at our website. The first thing to know about parallelograms is that a parallelogram is simply, and this is the definition, a quadrilateral, which means a polygon or a shape with four sides, with opposite sides parallel. So you're going to have four sides to the shape, sides across the shape from each other are going to be parallel. That's important because everything we know about parallel lines, in particular consecutive uh, angles are supplementary, and alternate interior angles are congruent can be used to help us to learn things about parallelograms. The first thing we're going to learn about parallelograms is that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are always congruent. Very easy to show. All you need to do is draw in the diagonal BD. If you go from B to D uh, and you drew a line in, then you can easily show that the two triangles created, BCD and DAB, are congruent to each other. And if you do that, then you can, you, you can do that using angle side angle and alternate interior angles. The second um, proof is that opposite angles are congruent. And actually, when you prove this one, it's very similar to when you prove that opposite sides are congruent. So now, so far, we've learned that BC is congruent to AD, meaning they're the same length. AB is congruent to DC, meaning they're the same length. And then angle B is congruent to angle D, and angle A is congruent to angle C. Uh, the next theorem, and this is the last one specific to parallelograms, is about the um, diagonals. And if you draw in both sets of diagonals, you'll find out that point E is the midpoint of both diagonals, where they intersect each other. And the way we say that is, the diagonals bisect each other. So CE is congruent to EA and BE is congruent to ED. And then um, if you wanted to prove this, the way that you would do that um, is by using our theorems about parallelograms, knowing, for instance, CD is congruent to AB, and then you can prove some of these angles congruent and you can prove these opposite triangles, BEA and DEC congruent, which is enough to show that EC is congruent to AE and BE is congruent to ED. So remember, in a parallelogram, if you draw the diagonals, they bisect each other. And remember, when you get something that bisects something else, the most important piece of information from that is it creates two congruent segments. So again, BE is congruent to ED and EC is congruent to AE. Next, uh, there is a, that general fact that I talked about before, which is consecutive angles in a parallelogram are supplementary. And I wanted to reiterate that because I think it's very important to remember because sometimes it's forgotten um, as an important thing. So what that means is B is supplementary to C and B is supplementary to A. And that gives us an easy proof for showing that A is congruent to C using what's called congruent supplements, which is a nice theorem to use in geometry. All right, moving away from the general par parallelogram, what we're going to now talk about is special parallelograms, the first of which is the rectangle. And the rectangle theorem is, well, first, remember that a rectangle is a parallelogram. So everything about a parallelogram is true about a rectangle. Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent, which is easy to know because they're 90 degrees. And diagonals bisect each other. But it turns out not only do the diagonals bisect each other, but the diagonals of a rectangle are also congruent to each other. The rhombus theorem is that not only do the diagonals bisect each other and opposite sides are congruent and opposite angles are congruent, you can find out that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. And so you can show that uh, DB is perpendicular to AC. The way that you would do that is by showing that uh, all four of these little triangles in this rhombus are congruent to each other. And if you show all four congruent, the uh, angles add up to 360, and all three, four angles are congruent, so 360 divided by 4 is 90 degrees. So the angles are 90 degrees. 
The last parallelogram that we worry about is a square, but it turns out that a square is just a rectangle and a rhombus, and so all the things that are true about those are also true, and there's nothing special about a square. Um, it does turn out that DG is congruent to GF, congruent to GB, it's congruent to GA, but there really is no theorem that is true just about a square. It's just, it just takes on the theorems about all the other uh, shapes. So just a quick review in parallelograms. Remember, opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, diagonals bisect each other, consecutive angles are supplementary. We learned in a rectangle, diagonals are congruent to each other, and a rhombus, diagonals are perpendicular. So that gives you a nice overview of parallelograms. Uh, it's a good review. Uh, you know, if you can remember this video and come back to it before any kind of test or quiz you take, that would be very beneficial.